Hello everybody, Greg Lasseur here for Online Tennis Instruction. In today's video I'm going to talk to you about the backhand grip. And when we conduct our clinics in live instruction, and when players send in videos for analysis of their backhand, very often a common mistake they're making is they don't have the correct grip. Now you may be wondering why is the grip so important? Well the grip is what determines the angle of the racket face. So very often players have the wrong grip, so then they have to make a wrist adjustment and a arm adjustment here in order to square the, the racket out and it, you can see it puts me in a very weak position. So instead of just making one adjustment they end up making two. Now the grip determines the angle of the racket face. The angle of the racket face will determine the path of the swing which in turn will determine the body. So that grip is so so important. So what we recommend for players and starting with the one-handed backhand we recommend that you hold what we call grip number one which is an eastern backhand with a knuckle and the heel pad on that top bevel, bevel number one here. Now for two-handed players we recommend that you put the the uh, dominant hand on grip number two, bevel two or continental. That's where the heel pad and the base knuckle are on grip two like this. Now some players may be a little bit uh, call a strong two towards that 1.5 this ridge here but a strong two and then your left hand we recommend or the non-dominant hand, the top hand, should be on that, that middle of three, that eastern forehand grip. And that's a really good grip structure you know, for a two-handed backhand because it's going to help you to swing away from your body, which is very important for generating power, generating topspin, but also lengthening your hitting zone. Now we see some players have more of a straight on at contact, some are slightly bent, but you really want to avoid being too close to your body at contact, all right? So that's where we recommend for the um, two-handers, and then the one-hander we want to have that grip number one, so we can have that arm nice and straight at impact. What they will do, it's going to um, stabilize the arm so you have a much a stronger backhand. If you're on grip two, which is something you often see, you have to then turn the wrist here, and it puts you in a very weak position. Okay. Now the other thing we want to look at is that you spread this index finger, all right? We call this a trigger finger, particularly for the one-handers, because what they will do, it'll put this part of your your the the fatty part of your um, or the palm of your thumb behind the racket there. If you have have your um, your fingers bunched like this. Now you only really have this part of your thumb supporting the back of the racket, right? So it's really important that you spread that index finger like that. It just gives you a lot more stable grip structure. And the same would be true on that two-handed backhand, all right? So, so that's the first thing is finding the right grip. Now the second component is making that grip change happen very quickly. A lot of times, particularly with the one hand, as we see players, they're back in this position trying to fiddle and find the grip. And then often the ball's already bouncing and then it, it, they end up being late and they don't find the correct grip and then develop bad habits. So generally when you are turning for your backhand, whether you're hitting a one-handed backhand or two-handed backhand, simultaneously you're going to make a grip change, you're going to straighten the, um, the, 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 the dominant arm and you're going to turn. But I find that by making the grip change and straightening the dominant arm first, it's a good stepping stone because these things then start to happen automatically at the same time. But that way you can make sure you get that grip change off and all you have to worry about is that unit turn to then prepare the racket, right? So a very good way to uh, work on grip changes, and I've, I've made videos like this before, but just to go through it again, is to use your left hand or your non-dominant hand to change the grip, or change the angle of the racket face, where your dominant hand was simply the, the grip will swivel in that hand. So what you can do right now, you can follow along. Now if you're a one-handed player, one-handed backhand, we recommend that you wait in your ready position with your um, non-dominant hand like this, cradling the throat of the racket with the index finger on the strings. This helps you with racket head awareness, right? Now two-handers, we, we recommend that you wait stacked like this. Now you do see some players that will, will actually bring the hand down. Um, that's, that's a personal preference, but if you are struggling with this, then you may want to just wait in this ready position, particularly on your serve return, just so there's a lot less things to, to have to do when you're preparing your racket for, the, for your backhand. So you're going to take the racket in your left hand, so whether you're one-handed or two-handed, and simply turn the palm of your non-dominant hand straight ahead. So I'm going to turn that towards you. So you want to do this in front of a mirror and you want to turn that palm forward. Now as you do that you'll notice the angle of the racket changes. So you'll see the back of your strings a little bit. There's a little bit of an angle there. Okay? And you want to do that 
over and over. Then what you can do is you can place the racket in your right hand, or your, your dominant hand, excuse me, and you can be in your forehand grip and just practice letting that, the, the grip swivel in your hand. Now, whether you're two-handed or one-handed, as you turn the left palm forward, let the racket swivel in your right hand and then try to straighten the arm. And if you should find, you should be starting to find the correct grip. So if you're on a one-handed backhand, grip on two, uh, on one, excuse me. If you're a two-handed backhand player, grip on two, all right? And you want to do that over and over in front of the mirror. Now, once you have that part down, then what you want to do is add the turn to it. So, you know, you'd have your split step, you recognize it's a backhand, I've made that grip change. This, my right arm is straight, left arm slightly bent, okay? And then from there, you just want to just turn. All right, and you want to get into this position, whether you're hitting with a one or two. All right, so you would do a split step, grip change, straightening the arm, and then turn. And you want to practice that over and over. I'll do one more for the one-handers here. Turn this way. And that way you've done all, all the organization here. We do see players that may be set up more of a bent arm, but what happens is, is that on the one hand, they actually get that arm straight before they start to swing forward. So just to take the complication out of it, we do recommend sort of turning with that arm straight. That way, way you don't have to worry about it, because very often players will straighten too late, and then what happens, they're late on the shot, right? So. Those are the, the, the drills you can do to help you with the grip change. Now the other component is when you do make a grip change, when you go from a new, uh, an old grip to a new grip, very often if you're an incorrect grip to, to open when the strings point up, you have to then change your wrist position. So you have to roll that wrist. So we always say it's a new grip, new wrist. So if you have the correct grip, you don't have to roll that wrist anymore. You can see if I, as a, as a, as a one-handed backhand player, if you have grip number two, I'm coming in with what we call an open racket face. That's where the strings point up. The ball's going to sail on me. So players learn to turn that wrist. But if you now have the correct grip, if you turn the wrist, that ball's simply going to go down and into the net. So it's very important that you now learn the, the, the new wrist to go with your new grip. So I'm going to show you a drill using the net just to help you get the feel of what the wrist should now look like or feel like when you've made that grip change. All right, so you can use the net as a great um, tool just to help you to find that correct wrist position. So starting with the one-hander, you can press the ball into the net. I like to use the net strap because it's a little more stable. And I've got my grip on number one here. Arm is straight. You're going to practice lifting from the shoulder and kind of pushing into the net just gently so that ball rolls forward. And you want to get to this position where you haven't um, changed the wrist. You haven't rolled over, all right? So, so this is a good way to start to kind of feel it. Feel it from your shoulder here. Push gently into the net. Feel how the ball rolls off your strings. And you want to get to at least this position before anything else happens, right? So let's do it one more time like this. So you've got new grip, new wrist, gently pressing into the net and going this way. I'm not flicking or anything like that. Now, you can do the same thing with a two-hander. So now you're gonna be on grip number two with, in my case, the right hand. The left hand will be on three, a lefty uh, forehand. Okay, and you're gonna push more with the non-dominant hand. So being right hand, I'm gonna push more with my left hand, but I'm gonna make sure that I'm not rolling that wrist. Like I'm trying to keep a nice, good wrist position. I push forward gently into the net, the ball rolls off the strings. I wanna to get to this position so I can check that I haven't done this, okay, and lost the hitting zone. And that's the most important part. When you're working on your strokes, you really wanna lengthen that hitting zone so by having the correct grip, it'll help you to have a long hitting zone so you have a big window to contact the ball so you're less reliant on exact timing. I recommend that you get started right away. You can check your back end grips at home. If you find you don't have the correct grip, then you can work on the grip changes that we did in the beginning of today's session. And then when you can make it to the court, you can then find a net and just do this practice drill here just to make sure that you're developing the new wrist with the new grip. And that way you're not rolling and then hitting a lot of balls into the net. If you like today's video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments below. If you have any questions, please um, submit them. I'll be happy to answer them. And thank you for watching.